thank you, Father God, that our God is marching on. Our God leads the way. Lord, we lift up your banner, Father, as we face the situations of this world, Lord. That, Father, we lift up the banner of Jesus and we march on. We go forth, Lord. Lord, thank you for those men and women that have given their lives, Lord, that we may have the freedom today to stand in your church, in your sanctuary, Lord, and sing your praises. Thank you for the freedom that you've given us, Lord, through those men and women. Father, thank you for the soldiers that are to this day, Lord, still standing, standing for freedom, Lord, that you have blessed us with. Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to be here today to sing and glorify you. That, Father, you are God, you rule and you reign, Lord. And, Lord, that we will march on in the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you. Be with those that couldn't be here today, Father, for some reason. Watch over them. Keep them safe and out of harm's way. Lord, be with those that are sick, Father, that you may heal them, Lord, that they may sing the praises of Jesus Christ. And thank you for that. And, Father, thank you for my brothers and sisters that are here today, Lord, to worship you, to exalt you, to lift up the name of Jesus. Father, thank you again. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I can't believe y'all sat back there. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Everybody falls sometimes. Gotta find the strength to rise from the ashes. Make a new beginning. Anyone can feel the ache. You think it's more than you. Stronger than you know Don't you give up now The sun will soon be shining You gotta face the clouds To find the silver lining I've seen dreams that move the mountains Hope that doesn't ever end Broken hearts become brand new. That's what faith can do. It doesn't matter what you've heard. Impossible is not a word. It's just a reason for someone not to try. Everybody's scared to death When they decide to take that step Out on the water But it'll be alright Life is so much more Than what your eyes are seeing You will find your way Become brand new. That's what faith can do. Overcome the odds when you don't have a chance. That's what faith can do. When the world says you can't, it'll tell you that you can. I've seen dreams that move the mountains. Hope that doesn't ever end Even when the sky is falling I've seen miracles just happen Silent 
become brand new. That's what faith can do. That's what faith can do. Even if you fall sometimes, you will have the strength to rise. Amen, amen. How about turn around and welcome your neighbor here this morning and share a big smile with them, please. this morning or what? Yes. If you have your Bibles this morning, 
and you'll join me, we'll be in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Please rise for the reading of the word. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Amen. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your, respect, your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather together in your name, I ask you bid us to come boldly to your throne this morning. Hearts open, minds wide, receiving the word this morning and the gentle spirit that flows among us. Walk with us throughout the day. We are straight in our commitment to you and each other as we ask these things in most holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mike. Well, good morning to you. Hope you're doing well. Again, only the poor folks are here this morning. Didn't have much money to leave. Made those who have left come back safely. Congratulations to our seniors. I, I know it was a wet evening, they say. I'm so glad you were there with about some 400 more. Uh, what an honor. There's another graduation that's going to take place at the Enterprise Courthouse at about 11.30 on Wednesday. Your circuit clerk, Mr. Mickey Counts, is retiring from public service. He, he's been in that courthouse. It probably was about 20 years before in the other courthouse is a court bailiff, and uh, he's filled many positions as a sheriff of Coffee County. And, but he'll be retiring, and uh, Judge Head wished to invite you to come to his reception at 1130 in one of the courtrooms at uh, the courthouse in Enterprise, Alabama. Don't look that old. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a sight I remember being with him on the floor and him praying about... Uh, running for that position and, and God has blessed him with the hard work of his family and children and friends to elect him term and term again and could do it again if he wanted to and I'm glad that he's uh, got to the point where he is going to be able to retire, serve our military and uh, how many military do we have this morning, active or retired here? Stan, would you it's just, just take a little look around you it's, uh, y'all can't stand, that's okay just take a look around you they're, they're old and they're tired <laughs> This could be their day that we're celebrating, you know, and I appreciate them saying, I'll go and I'll do what I can do, you know, to uphold the oath that I've taken. But as I think about that, I was looking at the screenshot of Arlington. I walked through there and I've, I've had, you know, friends, uh, Mitch Carver, a young man who was in our church uh, on a number of years ago and uh, made it back, he volunteered to go back maybe the second or third time to Iraq and uh, was shot down and killed and I, I got that news on a Sunday morning about 10 minutes before I was going to preach it is uh, that he had been killed on Thursday of that week and I remember I had some visitors here from Korea uh, that worked with my brother and they said he your, your brother really cried a lot you know when you see people you see numbers and you hear about people dying uh, but when they eat at your table when they've been your kids friends it's a little different There's somebody's son somebody's daughter Somebody's husband, somebody's wife. So again, you don't need to forget that. I'm speaking this morning on the importance of remembering. And, uh, and thank God for the memories we have for those who have served and took, taken care of us. And uh, but to think back as we look, what an awesome song. You did a great job on that. Thank you so much. I'm telling you, if our, where our streets are full of kids that don't have a clue about why we, where we are and how we got here doing all kind of stupid stuff. If I could just get a grip on that little song, it would be an awesome thing. But you got men and women who have had in their heart to know they serve a God who will take care of them. Man, things change. And uh, so you be grateful to those around you and you be thankful for what you have and, and remember from where you come. Maybe if you're visiting with us this morning or first time or first time in a long time, we'll have a visitor's card for you. I'd like to get you one of those. All right, home folks, we're glad that you're here. Um, I was thinking about the verse that Brother Mike had, had just read. There's a couple things I want to uh, add to that. In, in verse 13 of that same chapter, Philippians chapter 4, it says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I believe that. I don't know if you believe that, but I believe that. 
And if you don't believe that, you can't do that. But if you believe that, God has great things in store for you. So keep your focus. See great things happen. And then in the 19th verse, it says, And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Uh, if he's not your source, you're in a heap of trouble. I did a funeral yesterday for a 51-year-old man who died in a house fire. He was an avid smoker, smoked a way long, longer than he should, but you can get too, smoke, too much smoke sometimes, and he passed away. I had a chance to witness to him on a great number of occasions. I don't know where he ever trusted Jesus as his Lord and Savior or not, but it wasn't because he didn't hear, didn't have an opportunity. And I was just thinking about his little mom. She was 80-some-odd years old, had uh, lived next door to him, and went into the house when she saw it was a fire to try to get him out and wake him up, and he was already deceased, found him cold on the floor. And I thought, well, who would go in there but a mom? A firefighter and hopefully some friends. The scripture in John 15, 13, it says, How great a love does a man have than to lay his life down for his neighbor. So anyway, I love you. I appreciate you this morning. What a day to celebrate. And it's not about uh, cold beer and watermelons and hot dogs and hamburgers. But it's about the heritage of who we are and how we got here. But again, I love you. And thank you for those who serve and have served. And, and for those who have been in your family that has served, I I picked up a rifle this week. It was a Springfield 1903, and it was made in 1917. I thought about Brother George. He might have shot that thing at some point in time back in WW1. It's just a matter as you look at things and the history of what's going on around us, but we have a rich heritage. Brothers, if y'all would come, we've got some young men in training this morning, and our offerings have gone up. I told them don't leave without you putting something in it. Just kidding. But you, uh, I thank you men for serving. God bless y'all so much. I want you to continue to pray for Addison James, continue to lift her up, that God would just continue to work in and through her life. You pray for others around you that you know that are suffering. I pray that you pray for Miss Deborah's sister. She's still going through some very rough times. Uh, you know, life is, is, is difficult. And, you know, as I was standing before those people yesterday, I, you know, I wish I had all the answers of why things happen like they do. But I know the God who has all the answers. And I know that nothing goes by him unnoticed. He says not a sparrow falls to the ground that he's not aware of that. And so I just want you to know that God is faithful. And you keep your faith and trust in him in all that you do. Let us pray. Father, we bless you this morning. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for this awesome day that we as a nation set aside to commemorate and to remember those who have given their life, Lord, to us as a country to experience the freedom we have to drink sweet tea or, or to drink water or to eat whatever we want to eat and go and worship as we want to. And, Father, I know this nation was founded on Christian principles that we were able to choose to serve you and to lift you up. They were one under the hand of our government telling us who we had to serve, who we had to worship. And, Father, I thank you there's no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved apart from the name of Jesus. And, Father, I'm just very matter-of-fact about that. There is no other way in. And, Father, your word tells us that. And, Father, we thank you through the power of the Holy Spirit that you continue to draw men and women to your Son, Jesus Christ. And, Father, I pray this morning that we will be solemnly aware of that as we sang that song a little while ago as it stirred our hearts and our memories. Thank you for the, for the faith of men and women. Thank you, Father, for those who, who did not love their life even unto death but were willing to go that we might be able to have the freedoms that we have. Father, I pray this morning as we look into your word that your Holy Spirit would dig deep into our heart. And, Lord, that we would leave this place with a new song, a new spring in our step, and, Father, desire to serve you more. And, Father, again, I just pray your blessings upon those who are in physical ailments. I pray for those in nursing homes and rehab centers. I pray for those in veterans' homes, Father, that are there because of war. Some because they've managed to get through war and just got old. I just pray, God, that you would comfort them. And, Father, help us to always have respect for those who are willing to serve and wear the uniform. And we're so grateful to be at Fort Rooker, Alabama. Bless this post and those who direct and guide it. I pray for the chaplain's program. I pray for those, Lord, that, that share the gospel wherever they go. And, Father, I pray your blessing be upon this offering as we take it this morning, as we receive it from cheerful givers. Father, help us to be good stewards of what we do as we reach out around this. Thank you for our graduating seniors. I pray that your Holy Spirit would go before them. And, Father, I pray there'd be men and women of integrity, of character, of truth. And, Father, they would affect this world, that their feet prints would be left in the, upon the hearts of men. And, Father, as they begin to look around and see how they've influenced those who are closest to them. Father, thank you for the gospel. Thank you for our youth. Thank you for our kids. And, Father, again, we just ask you to be glorified and bless this offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless you. I thought it was kind of unique this morning, Brother John. You always talk about be flexible or you might break. 
And Brother Eddie just sat out at the piano and started playing that. And then Kenny walks up and starts playing the clarinet. My eyes have seen the glory. And then Ben gets back there and he starts picking. And then Yvonne gets up here on the snare. So, hey, it's a God thing. We've got to lead out with this one. So, anyway, it does. It does. God is so good. He's a good, good father. Get those passed out before I lose them. That would be great. Because my office is a hot mess, and I don't want to mislace your shirt. Right. So, thank you. Had a great little reception for the kids the other night, and um, 
Awana has been awesome to be able to see the kids uh, learn and do and the influence. I, Zion came up to me before church and he uh, had, had his dad send me a text the other day. He was singing that song, Stand Up for Jesus, Stand Up for Jesus. He said, John, Brother John, Big John, Brother John, Preacher John, Pastor John, would you stand up? Would you stand up for Jesus? I said, I will stand up for Jesus if you'll stand up for Jesus. Man, it's amazing. You know, it's just been a... I'm talking about a hot mess. It's been a hot mess since, uh, I guess, the late 60s when we invited God not to be involved with our schools. We invited God not to be involved in our prayer life. And we, you know, just total disrespect. And it's gone to hell in a handbasket, for lack of a better term. I deal with dummies every day of the week. Black, white, Hispanic, it don't matter. If you don't know Jesus, you're a mess. And they have absolutely no respect for nobody or nothing. And I just wonder one day if they understand that they're going to stand before a holy, righteous God and they're going to give an account for what they did with his son. And I'm telling you that if you know Jesus and you're a Christian, your life is different. I mean, you're different. You walk in love. You know, you care about folks around you. Um, it was amazing to have an opportunity again to conduct that funeral service yesterday for a man that I'd known for a great number of years. Uh, in in a, a very mixed multitude of people from all walks of life and uh, as I shared with him I said you know probably maybe 25 percent of you may be Christians here today maybe 50 percent of you go to church somewhere but I said for the vast majority it's probably the most of the word of God you heard in a long time and I just want you to know that Jesus is the only way he is the truth the, <laughs> the door the bread of life he's our life he's the light of the world he's our everything and I said you need to know that because when you die and we're all going to die one day. It don't matter how, how well you take care of yourself or how you neglect it. Uh, you, you get a little more years out of it. If you, uh, um, and my old buddy was a smoker. You know, he just he smoked probably a couple, two, three packs a day. And uh, you can get too much smoke. That was proved to him when that house caught on fire. You can only inhale so much. And people who smoke those things are on just a slow suicide. Your lungs will give up one day, and uh, you won't be able to breathe. But anyway, enough of that. Uh, but I'm so glad that as we have a chance to look into God's Word together, there was a, uh, a thought that came to my mind. Uh, there's a passage in Malachi. If you've got your Bibles, that would be the last, last book before Matthew. And I would assume if you don't have a Bible, you've probably got it memorized. Feel free to call on you any time to quote it. Uh, you need to get the Bible in your hand that you don't uh, get misled. I would not purposely mislead you by any means, but you need to, you need to know what God's Word says. How are you going to do that? Because you're going to be judged according to His Word in the end. Uh, a lot of people tell me that ain't nobody going to judge me. I say, well, there is one who will judge you in the end, and you'll certainly have to take a, take a look at that. Another quote from A.W. Tozier. It says, holy is the way God is. Holy is the way God is. To be holy, he does not conform to a standard. He is the standard. And people all the time want to judge themselves by the, the rankest sinner on the street. And that's who not, we're not going to be measured up by that. You know, it doesn't matter what your neighbor does or what your friend does. It matters what you do and how the Lord is reflected in your life. And so it's so important. But this passage, it really helped me because this Memorial Day and, and throughout the Bible, we'll look, Paul said, it's no problem for me to remind you. Peter says, it's necessary for me to stir up your remembrance. How many times do you have to be reminded as kids? Of course, you're grown now. You graduate, so you won't have no problem with that. But it, it, you get smarter now as you go along. But think about our kids as you train them, as you teach them, as you go through life. I know I'd be reminded a lot. I mean, over. Mama left list on the, on the kitchen, you know, on the refrigerator door of what I need to do. And I still missed it sometimes. But those things shape us as we go along. But we have to be reminded. You know, it's, it's amazing that we can get up every other day of the week, but Sunday sometimes. Uh, and, and I talk to people who, who are just, they're just crushed because they're just having such a hard time. I said, well, you, are you reading the Word? Well, not lately. Well, where are you going to church? And one of these ladies I was ministering to this week lives right across the street. I love you. I've known you since you was 13. I'm so proud of what you're doing. You need to get out and come to church. You need to get in church. It's just amazing to me. And listen, going to church doesn't save you. 
but it sure won't hurt you. And, and as you hear the word, as you're encouraged and hopefully uplifted, and, and how can we, I mean, we sing that song like you really meant it. And when we worship, it's not something we practice and get together. It's an overflow of what goes on all the time. That's why Mick and the folks have such a hard time getting folks uh, fired up in here, if you, for lack of a better term. Get them involved, engaged in what's going on. Because we ain't give it a thought throughout the week. And we're going to come get holy in 30 minutes. It isn't going to happen. Brother Walt came to that funeral yesterday and sang. He said, it was hard. <laughs> it was hard. He said, they just, it, it was hard. And keep in difference, a little different than a church service. A lot of folks there were to pay respect for the man because they knew him and his family because they knew him. And I know they wish they had been a different message. Something a little less pointed. Uh, but, you know, you don't never know when's your last opportunity uh, to be able to speak to someone. And I think as pastor, as, a, as, a, as a, just a Christian, uh, that you think that maybe every day may be their last day. What you going to do? How is it going to happen? Well, this verse of Scripture, Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16. It says, Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord gave attention and heard it. That actually was reminding me that they went, uh, well, I went fishing. He watched, and he said, You know, I didn't catch no fish, but we had a good time talking about Jesus, didn't we? I said, We sure did. Fellowship is a wonderful thing. Whether you're working on automobiles, fishing, golfing, sitting around the pool, whatever it is, that Jesus is part of a conversation. It's not time wasted by any means as you look at that. Those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord gave attention to it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who esteem his name. Is your name in that book? Is your name? I'm not talking about, I mean, to be in there, in this book of remembrance, there's the, the book of life. He says in Revelation, the books were open and the book was opened. And if your name is not in the book, you're expelled. You're not put in time out. You, you, you go to hell if your name is not in the book. And here, evidently, these folks' names were in the book because I was talking about the Lord God Almighty about God and his son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And I realize it's the Old Testament, but it was still there. This promise of this Messiah to come and as Jesus was the promised Savior. He says, those who, who, who spoke to one another about the Lord. And, you know, we've had many things. It's amazing the things that come through our kids' Happy Meals and boxes. Uh, the Lord of the Rings. He-Man. Superheroes. And Jesus. As you look at the fact of who he is. This book of remembrance was written for those who fear the Lord and who esteem his name. Um, I have people sometimes that get around me that let a few hails and downs and various other words fly very freely. And then they'll say, well, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I said, well, it is a little offensive, but it's not so much that you're offending me, but you're offending the God who created you. And you don't need to be using those words, I don't think. I think it would behoove you. You wouldn't feel bad about it if it was okay. And in verse 17, listen, he says, they will be mine. How many times have you kids said that? That's mine. If you got kids in the nursery, ever how many we've got there, you get a toy in there, and you probably got about 18 to 25 hands on it. That's mine. The Lord says, they will be mine. I'm glad that I'm his. They are mine, says the Lord of hosts. On, the, on that day I will prepare my own possession. I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Now if them folks that think you're going through the tribulation, I want you to explain to me this after a while if you get a chance. Go back in the fourth chapter of the book of Revelation when God called John and says, Come up here and I'm going to show you what's going to happen. The church is out of here. And he says here again, I'm going to spare you because you're mine. You are not ashamed of me, I'm not ashamed of you. You're mine. And in my own possession, I will spare them as man spares his own son who serves him. Look what he says here. So you will again distinguish between the righteous and the wicked. And our world says today, well, you're intolerant. You're a bigot. You think you're better than I am. No, 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 no. Listen, we're just not as good as Jesus yet. We're working on that, and we're to pursue that. And he says for us to pursue that. He says, we're to move on to maturity in him. He says, you will distinguish between the righteous and the wicked. Don't you know? 
Praise God for the science teacher that whooped up on the fellow and went to kill folks at school. We'll let take a bullet or two. I mean, we're so passive and we, we, we don't get angry about the right stuff and we, we, we're not committed to who he is around us. Just wild. You will distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Duh. Seventh chapter of the book of Matthew says, he says, judge not and you shall be judged, but say with the same judgment you measure out it to come back to you. He says, but yet judge with righteous judgment. He says, won't you first get the two by four out of your eye that you can see clearly how to get the speck out of your brother's eye? None of us are without sin. If you're a Christian, you should be sinning less and sinning less. And one day we will be sinless as we find ourselves in his presence. But think about that. And he says, this book of remembrance are written there. And I just wonder if your name's in it. Isaiah, if you would back up a few books there, Isaiah chapter 46. Isaiah 46 this is a powerful passage. But this rock of remembrance is a powerful thing. Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 9, listen to this. He says, remember the former things long past. For I am God and there's no other. I am God and there's no one like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things which have not been done saying my purpose will be established and I will accomplish my good pleasure and God don't need us to be able to help him you remember they, they were talking about this that and other and the Lord said you know I, I can raise up sons of Abraham out of rocks not a big deal you know I'm giving you a chance to engage with me and to co-labor with me but I don't have to have you and we give invitation. I said, won't you please receive the Lord Jesus Christ? Won't you trust him as your Lord and Savior? Now, how dumb is that sometimes that you beg people to miss going to hell? You talk them out of being fallen in eternity and burning forever and eat up with worms. I wish you wouldn't talk about it. It's in the book. You're going to live forever somewhere. You're never going to quit living we're either going to be in eternal damnation apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, or we're going to be in his presence on the street of the gold in a great banquet table. There is a big, big house there. And I'm looking forward to that. I really am. You know, it's, it's amazing. You're talking about death, folks. Get real jerky. The passage I shared with them yesterday of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, the first two verses, it says, A good name is better to be desired than precious ointment. And we want more precious ointment and stuff and things and not really concerned about our name. But a good name is better to be desired than precious ointment. And the day of one's death is better than the day of his birth. Can you figure that? Did you ever think you'd get to be 17, 18, you girls? You know, I remember, I said, man, if I can just get to be a teenager. I, if I can just get to be, I can get my permit. If I, if I can get my driver's license. And daddy let me drive that white nomad station wagon with a six cylinder and the three on the column. Ain't even heard about no air conditioning. If I can just get that, I'll be okay. And then if I can get to be 18. Boy, if I can just get to be 19, I'd get out and my mom and dad and do what I want to do. And I got married. <laughs> Approach that with caution. My wife's not here this morning. I can still say we've been married 45 wonderful years, and she would correct me. They've not all been wonderful. But I'm telling you that life is an unfolding revelation. As you go in and you begin to make the choices and you make decisions, and, and mom and dad were not near as foolish as you thought they were. And home is not near about a place as you once thought it might be as you look at it. But the Lord says, I want to do something for you. I want to lead you in the path that you need to go. I want to share this with you. I want you to establish my purpose. And it goes on in verse, it says in verse 10, declaring, declaring from end to beginning, the ancient times, things which have not been done, saying my purpose will be established. I will accomplish all my good pleasure. And God's pleasure for you is to be conformed to the image of his son. That's what he wants. He wants you to look like Jesus walking around here. It doesn't matter how, you, how much hair you got or how you style it or what you wear, but just that you would represent Jesus nicely as you go. He says he's calling the bird of prey from the east. Have you ever noticed so many buzzards hanging out lately? they everywhere. I just never, they really are, they're everywhere. They're getting ready for the great feast. I mean, that's just wild. They're, they're, they're everywhere. Just look as you look around. Birds of prey, buzzards, the, 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 the earth's garbage men. As they clean up these things. He said, I'm calling the bird of prey from the east. And, and the man of my purpose from a far country. 
That would be Jesus. I have spoken truly, I shall bring it to pass, and I have planned it, it surely I will do it. Listen to me, you stubborn-minded. I know there's none of those here this morning other than me that are a little stubborn and hard-headed. Well, listen to me, you stubborn-minded, who are far from righteousness. People cry, and they moan, and they try to do this, and they try to do that. And the only peace that you will ever have will be the peace that the Lord Jesus Christ gives you. He will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. He will change you from the inside out. He says, I will bring near my righteousness, it is not far off, and my salvation will not delay. Revelation 3.3, 3, you don't necessarily need to turn it. He says, you need to remember and repent. And we've all heard too much. I told that, those folks at that funeral yesterday, I said, he was his grandmother's funeral I preached. He was his, his stepdad's funeral I preached. So this boy has heard the gospel. Never doubt it. He has got a free ticket to heaven on more than one of occasion. He has heard over and over again. And many of you have heard. But what are you going to do with it? Hebrews chapter 4, he says, we all had good news preached to us, yet it profits some of us none because we fail to unite it with faith. If you don't believe, you can't leave. It's pretty good, isn't it? You better believe if you're going to go to heaven. You better put your faith in Jesus Christ. Just quickly, there's a couple of verses in, in 2 Peter. Uh, he says again, remember, it's no problem for me to tell you to remember 1 Peter 1.13 and, and then first, or 2 Peter 1.13, 2 Peter 3.1. And then in Joshua 4, 6, and 7, they made a memorial stone. When, when the Lord had parted the Jordan, they took rocks and they built this memorial. And he says, when your kids ask you, what's that over there for? Why is that? He says, you tell them what I did for you. We salute our veterans. And again, that was the most humbling thing, Kenny LeBlanc, to ride through and then walk through Arlington National Cemetery to look at some over 400,000 graves. Some celebrities, a few, but I'm talking about military men and women who have given their lives. It's an awesome experience, and it's very quiet and solemn. And this funeral is going on all the time, many a day. It's just a something, and it makes you stop. It makes you give some thought to it, like, wow. It's overwhelming sometimes. But in, in, you know, in, in Exodus 12, 14, the Lord was talking about the Last Supper. He said, this is a memorial table. I told you about my granny. They, my family gave a table like this when I was, I must have been about 12 years. No, I was 16 years old. That's when granny died. But they gave a table like this to the First Assembly of God Church. On, it was on uh, Park Avenue. And it says, do this in remembrance of me. <clears throat> so I, w I was thinking, hey, granny must have been pretty sporty. Got this table up here and we're going to do this in remembrance of granny. Then I understood that that meant in remembrance of what Jesus did to us, for us, and what he didn't do to us. But we remember that. We, we have to keep our kids stirred up, and we have to be reminded to remember the good things God has done for us. First Samuel seven twelve, he says he made this memorial stone, and he called it Ebenezer. It was it a song we sang, you know, lift my Ebenezer eyes? I wonder what I've seen some eyes I thought were Ebenezer from time to time. But those are eyes of remembrance. We look and we see the good things God has done for us. It's amazing in your life sometimes that you don't really appreciate people till they're gone. You don't build a monument or have a party for them till they're dead and gone. But then you look back and you say, man, thank you. Thank you for making a mark in my life. And you know the people you influence every day? The impact that you have every day with people you talk to? If you're positive and upbeat and you're spirit-filled and you're walking with Jesus, they're going to take note of that. And nothing happens by accident. God is in the midst of it all. Satan's not smart enough to make it happen. And we need to give him the glory and the praise. We see that. And now for the message. I know you're glad to get to that. Deuteronomy chapter 8, if you take just a moment and look there. This verse of Scripture, this passage, I guess, meant more to me as I was growing up and as a young man, a young married man, and uh, trying to raise a family and not really knowing what to do or how. And then God called me into the ministry, and that was a shake-up and shake-out. I, I wanted to be a politician. Yeah. And, but God called me to preach, and I thought, man, it's amazing. But you have an opportunity to affect a lot of folks in a lot of situations. Uh, never, never turn down an opportunity to pray, to speak, to make a difference wherever you're at. Who knows? 
It was only by the grace of God that Alex and I didn't run into that house and try to get Eddie out the other day. Usually about once a week we'll go out that way to go fishing about 6 and I will call you when we get up. Leave about 5.30 and back at around 8.15. But we'd have went by there and we'd have seen the smoke and, and I would hope that we would have went in and maybe kicked the door in. If we couldn't find a key and, and go in there and try to get that young man out. But mom had a key and she went in. An 80 some odd year old lady. That was her baby. She had to go get him. Such a difficult time as you look at that. But God orchestrates everything, you know. And his brother came by about 4.30 that morning, and he said he smelled something burning. He drove a bitty truck and had a bunch of eggs he was carrying up to Luverne. And he said, I, I looked. I didn't see anything. Everything looked fine. And then about 6, somebody came by and saw some smoke coming out of the vents at the top of the house. And they got Mom, and she went in. And by that time, the, they'd called the fire department. Things began to happen. Uh, it gets hot in the house when and the ceiling's on fire and things are going on. But I just, you know, I thought about that. You know, what would we do? I would hope we would forget about fishing. I'd hope we'd forget about whatever we're going to do and, and take care of it, what was happening in the situation. But God does all things well. I had a frog in my throat and didn't sleep the night before, so I was a little wore out, and we didn't get up and go. But you think about this, but in this eighth chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, and listen to this, it's, it's, it's just 18 short verses. But this will change your life. He says, all commandments that I command in you today, you shall be careful to do. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1. That you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to give to your forefathers. You cannot get away from obedience. You cannot. The Lord told Saul, he says, obey is better than sacrifice. If it's between, and when you do obey, you are going to sacrifice. But sacrifice, sacrificial giving and not obeying is not going to get the job done. He says, he, he says you, you were there, and in verse 2 he says, You shall remember, memorialize, hang on to, all the way which the Lord your God has led you in the wilderness these 40 years, that he might humble you. Have you ever thought about what he's doing in your life? Have you ever just cried and said, well, how am I going to get through this? How am I going to handle this? Craziest thing. I remember when John Wayne was born, and we brought him home on the November day, he was born on the 18th. I guess we brought him home maybe on the 11th, something like in that. And, and I, I mean, here he was, nine pounds, eight ounces, nine, five, something like that. And me and his little mama was that little house over on Forest <laughs> Avenue. And, and, we're, and it, it was sleeting in Enterprise, Alabama, and, that, and a little snow. And that was unusual. And we brought this little thing. I said, what are we going to do with this? Where does the bottle go? What, what do you do? As you look at, and it was such a humble experience that, that you, you've been there. If you've had a kid, I mean, you just you just weep. You think, "Oh Lord God, what, is, what are we going? How are we going to do this?" But the Lord took care of us. You know, we, we figured that thing out. We worked through that. You know, and and uh, when when a baby hurts and you don't know why, you wonder, "Well, God, you got to help us." And when they're colicky and and they can't help it and you can't help it, what do you do? It's just wild, you know, as you see it. But He says, "I want I want to bless you." He said, I want, to, I want to give you some good things here. He says, you should remember the way the Lord your God led you in the wilderness in the 40 years, and he would humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And I'll, I'll never forget the, the doctor, Dr. Herb Gannon, came out in the hallway, and I was sitting there with my beard and long hair, and, and he says, I don't know if I can save both of them or not. Well, I knew his mom, and I was pretty fond of her. I ain't never seen him, so I, oh. I said, Doc, I have faith in God and trust in you, and I'll be over here praying. And it was a long night. She left home that morning, on that evening, it was Saturday evening, the Gene Reagan Farm Show was on. We was watching that, and she was at five minutes. I would, I'd time it, and I said, go. She said, you've got to quit this. And that went on, but that, he was not born until about 7 o'clock the next morning. They had to take him. That was a long, long night and a lot of pain. That little girl just, it's a near-death experience, ladies, isn't it, to bring a kid into this world. It's just you go through so much. That's why you should never disrespect your mama. I don't care what she does or how she does. You need to love her. You need to, you, she, you owe her. I wish I'd never been born. Why? Well, I, I don't think you understand that you're a gift from God. Well, I don't like the way I am. Well, God made you like you are. And God caused you to be born again. And God will lead you in the ways that he leads you. I mean, I'm just telling you, he's got a plan for you. It's like the Jeremiah talked about the potter's wheel. He says, well, the thing molded, say to the maker, why have you done this? 
In Romans, he talks about that. When things happen in our life, we're not just like we want to be. And You know, I, I've had enough grease in this year and enough hands laid on for this thing to start working again. It still don't work so good over here. <laughs> but that God does all things well. And he, he will take care of us. And when we're weak in whatever area, God will be our strength. So don't, don't worry about you. Hang on. He humbled you and he let you be hungry. And he fed you with manna from which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you understand. And we're hard-headed sometimes. And God loves you enough not to give you a social promotion. Before you can go along, you've got to pass the test. He don't stumble you through. Uh, there is no kid going to be left behind. He wants you to go to heaven and leave with him, but he's not, you just don't get in. You've got to be born again. And God holds you accountable for the amount of intellect you have and the amount of light you've been given, the amount of truth you've been given, he's going to hold you accountable for that. You can blame whoever you want to. But it's him who does the work in your life. He says that he might make you understand that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. You need to know that. If you don't read this book, you don't care. I believe the Bible. You don't believe no more of it than you practice. I love the Bible. When's the last time? It's been a while. When's the last time you checked your text messages, your Facebook post, and all this? Sort of, I'm on that all the time. Have you ever thought about if you read the Bible just a tenth of that time? The change that would happen in your life? All that other stuff's going to crash and burn. Folks going to disappoint you. But you remember who gave his life for you. He says, your, your clothing did not wear out, nor did your feet swell those 40 years. You ever had your feet swell up a little bit? Your clothes wear out? He says, 40 years, it didn't happen. He took care of them. Thus you shall know in your heart that the Lord your God was disciplining you just as a man disciplines his son. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Don't fear man. Don't fear the government. Fear Jesus. Fear God. Fear the Holy Spirit. Walk in his ways. He will take care of you. The Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks and water and fountains and springs, flowing forth in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, land where you shall eat food without scarcity. Kenny, how are you doing? You had a lot of company this week, didn't you? Y'all still got a few groceries? <laughs> Nobody left, left hungry. You know, we, we're so blessed. We're so blessed. He might even stir up some pray leans for them folks. I don't know. But, that may, but I'm just thinking, God has blessed us. We have an abundance in so many ways. Food without scarcity, we're there. In which you shall lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron, and out of those hills you can dig copper. Hmm. When you have eaten, and look what he says, when you eaten and are satisfied, you shall bless the your Lord your God for the good land which he's given you. So I guess you can ask the blessing after you eat. Lord, that show was some good bread. That fried chicken, the best I ever had. And that nana pudding, man, that was wonderful. And that cornbread, wow, it was just salty, just right. Lord, thank you. Thank you for an appetite and thank you for food. And thank you for the nourishment that you give us through this. He says, you, you thank him for that. And, and he says again, he's giving, he says, and look what he says, beware. 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 Lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his ordinances and his statues, which I'm commanding you today. It's important. You remember in this book, he says, if you will keep my commandments, walk in my ways, acknowledge me in all your ways, he says, I will make you the head and not the tail. You'll be above and not beneath. But if you don't, it's going to be rough. It's going to be terrible. <laughs> he says, lest when you have eaten and are satisfied, you've built good houses and lived in them. Man, we've got a nice house. I was looking at the book that Rod had shared. We had a pleasure of being invited to a, a little dinner with a couple of missionaries that he's and Janice support and been doing it for a number of years. They're, they're aviation missionaries. They fly food in and fly sick folks out. And, and they're the history from back in 54 and it started out with just some little putt-putt planes and then other things. And you talk about runways and sometimes the only runway you've got is a river or a lake that you can land on. No other place to get in. It was amazing to see there. There were you talk about owning a house. They said we never owned a house. 
been doing this and we were able to come into one here recently as we're nearing retirement but he said we're, we're there we'd come home for a few months and we're back over there for several years as we worked and did this and I was looking at that book of those folks and this is in the uh, Papa in Indonesia and uh, you think things are not good with you you need to take a look at that book you can get by with a whole lot less than what you get by with electricity and air condition is wonderful you know, what if you were sleeping on the dirt, covered up with nano, nano branches or this, that, and the other? What if you was not concerned about, you know, what a good bathroom you had when the woods was only the bathroom that you had? So you may remember using an outhouse. My grandpa and them had one of them out there. They did have electricity. They had the first remote light I'd ever seen, remote control light. In that little room in the middle of it, there was a bed, and, and on the walls, they, in the wintertime, they'd staple up cardboard boxes to shut out the cold wind from coming in. And up under the house, the hogs would root around, and uh, you could smell them and hear them. But they had this string tied to this there was an extension cord coming out of the ceiling with the bub screwed in it with one of them pull strings. And my granddaddy, great granddaddy, was so smart, he tied him a piece of uh, sack uh, uh, string. And, uh, and run it over to the bedstead so they get into bed, they could turn that baby out. Everything was good. But the Muhammad Ali that said he was so quick he could switch off the light and get in the bed before the room got dark. That's fast, isn't it? <laughs> that is fast as you look at that. So but that remote control is not bad. You know, you kind of get up and do that. Nobody wants to get up and, and stumble around. He goes on and he, he says here in verse 6, Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to, to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord God is bringing you into a good land, land of brooks of water, fountains of spring, flowing with hills and mountains, a land of wheat and barley. As you think about this, you know, he says, when, you, when you've eaten these things, beware lest you forget. He, he pulls on in, in verse 12, he says, lest when you have eaten and are satisfied, you've built good houses, lived in them. When your herds and your flocks multiply, your silver and your gold multiply, and all that you have multiplies. You remember... In the days when Paul and Silas were there at the uh, the temple gate, and they were beg guy was begging, begging for alms, and he got legs. You remember? He <laughs> they said silver and gold we ain't got, but what we got in the name of Jesus, we'll give you. Rise up and walk. And so they reached down and took him by the hand and lifted him up as he was going to get up and go. He said he jumped up and he leaped and praised him, went into the synagogue thanking God for what he had done. Today the church has got not much power, but they got a lot of silver and gold. But we don't have a lot of power. It's because the power is still there. It says we don't believe, we don't hang on, we don't reach out, we don't tap that. It says when your heart becomes proud and you forget the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and it just blows me away that we have a lot of folks today who are still fussing about slavery. Has anybody here been a slave? You might have some kin folks, well, but we ain't been. We're enslaved to our sinful ways. You know, and, and, and we, you have to forgive and you have to move on no matter what's going on around us. You know, we, God owes me nothing. Does he owe you anything? I, I thought he, he takes us in as his children. He takes us freckles and all. He takes us with all of our imperfections because he loves us. And when he says be born again, that means we're changed from the inside out. We've got a new heart, a new desire, a new spirit, and things are different about us. If we would practice loving one another, things would be so different. He led you through the great and the terrible wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water. He brought water for you out of the flint of the rock. Wasn't that a miracle? You know, as Moses had spoke to the rock, as Moses had tapped the rock, in the end God told him to speak to the rock, and, and he was aggravated. must have been a bunch of Baptists in that group. He was aggravated because they were still moaning, groaning, and complaining. And he, he swore and hit the rock. Water still came forth. But God said, Moses, I need to talk to you just a minute. Come on, I'll show you something. Took him on the mountain and says, take a look. This is where you were headed, but you ain't going. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. Started out a basket case, right? Mom put him in a basket, put him in the river. Things kind of come together, you know, and ended up, the, she was there and the Pharaoh was daughter. So I wish I had somebody that could nurse this little boy. She said, my mama would do it. I know when I'll carry him to her. He still got to raise her. But here, God, because he, he says, you broke fellowship with me. You treated me with disdain. So I'm going to go ahead and kill you and bury you. 
He's in. He says, there's only God and Moses at the funeral. You think, well, they should have made a big to-do. He should have laid in, in, in maybe in the, the tabernacle of meetings or in the tent there. He should have laid out there. No, God said, no. He's just a servant. That's all we are, just a servant as we look at it. But he made the rock. The flint rock. In the wilderness he fed your, your manna, which your fathers did not know, and he might humble you, and he might test you to do good for you in the end. Romans eight twenty eight. For we know that all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Verse 29 says he predestined and that we be conformed to the image of his son as he changed us. He says he was going to do it for you to your good. And then verse 17, otherwise you may say in your heart, my power and the strength of my hand made me this wealth. Look how good I am. Look what I did. Nebuchadnezzar had that mistake. You know, look at my fine kingdom. Look at all these serpents I got. I am so good. It says, God struck him down. He crawled on his old force. His fingernails growed out like claws on a line. Hair grew all over his body, and he eat grass for a season of time until he come to his senses. Did you know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel said, their God's a God. He's the real deal. And God restored his kingdom to him, changed him. Sin will drive you mad, cause you to act stupid, do foolish things. Let me tell you something. If you're smoking weed... And you're taking pills, and you're drinking alcohol, and you're doing this synthetic stuff, your brain is going to be fried. I got some friends that don't know the time of day. You can draw them a picture and they can't figure it out because they've done that so long. They're all messed up. I ain't never had no marijuana. I ain't never had no drugs. I ain't been drunk but one time and it was on drugstore alcohol, mixing alcohol in a Sprite. And I figured out if this is what this is like, I don't need to do this anymore. There's life without it. I'm just telling you, kids, are, they're crazy. And later this week, they said her son just couldn't go to sleep, but had a joint. I said, he needs a joint. It needs to be about three foot of leather belt on his butt. That's what he needs. <laughs> you were not born with deficiency in, in marijuana or alcohol or barbiturates, this opium. So you weren't born. You didn't. You don't. I mean, listen, pain's pain, but listen. A lot of it's just addictive, and it's just controlling, and it just, you know, just messes you up. But anyway, he says you didn't do it in verse 16 or 18. But you shall remember <clears throat> the Lord your God. It is he who has given you power to make wealth. You have to trust him. He puts things in our path. He gives us opportunities. Let me tell you something about opportunities. They don't last long. The doors are not open all day long. You see an opportunity, you need to take advantage of that opportunity. How many times have you said, well, I should do that? I used to tell my wife and my sister-in-law, I said, you know, we need to own this, this, this property. We need to build us some, some mini storage warehouses. This is back in 73 and 4. They weren't none. I said, that would be a good idea. People got stuff and they need somewhere to put. We ain't having that. And how many hundred of them are in our city now? I could still be back collecting money. My wife got mad with me because I didn't make those, those orange combs that go on construction sites. She said, how much brains does it take to figure that out? Why didn't you think about that? That everywhere you go, for miles, whoever came up with that, sitting back counting their change. Opportunities. You see what's out there, and you do what you can do to make it happen. But there's no escape from hard work. That's part of the curse. In the beginning, he says, man will learn his living by the sweat of his brow. And childbirth is going to hurt. So you just talk to Eve when you get there, ladies, about that situation. Didn't have to be that way. But the choices we make causes things in our life to continue to follow us. Remember the Lord your God is he who's given you power to make wealth, that you may confirm his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. And it should come about if you either forget the Lord your God and go after other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you today that you shall surely perish. You reckon why we're in the mess we're in? From the White House to the Poor House. Reckon why? As you look at that. And people have no respect for the Lord, have no respect for righteousness. He says, if you will honor me and, and do it, but if you don't, says you're going to perish. 
Like the nations that the Lord makes perish, makes to perish before you, so you shall perish because you would not listen to the voice of the Lord your God. End of story. What you going to do? Remember, thank God for those who gave their life that we could have a country to live in. You know, that we could have the freedom that we do have. But listen, you better thank the Lord God that you have an opportunity to live in heaven forever. And the peace of mind is more than, you know, I mean, money can't buy that. I've got some rich drunk, I got some rich drunk friends. It's amazing to me. They do totally stupid. They get all greased up with alcohol. And they don't know which end is up. You think, well, money would, would take care of all problems. Money's not the cure to problems. Jesus is our only happiness, our source of happiness, our source of fulfillment. And I promise you, he'll take care of you if you'll just let him. But this day and this week, tomorrow, as we have a chance to celebrate a little bit, don't you forget. Don't forget what mankind has done for you, but don't forget what your Heavenly Father has done for you. If he had not made mankind and give us this instinct to be able to take care of ourselves and to be able to stand up, where would we be? My poor old Jehovah Witness friends, you know, they don't want to salute the flag, they don't want to celebrate a birthday, they don't want to get involved in the military. Well, they sure enjoy a lot of the benefits of a free country and nation, not beating them up. I'm just telling you, uh, war is always going to be with us until the Lord comes back, and then there's going to be the big bang. That's where the big bang is going to come in. It's going to be a big bang. It's going to be, he's going to wind it up and clean it up. But I love you. I pray this morning that if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, don't leave here with that. It's very simple. I remember as a 14-year-old boy kneeling at an altar similar to this, telling the Lord I was a sinner and asking him to come into my life. Save my soul. Cleanse me, Lord. And he did that. And I've never gotten over it. I'll be 64 on July 21st. Don't forget that. It's an important day. Try to be here. On the 21st of July, we'll celebrate my birthday. We've done all those every day, all these years since I've been here, and it's exciting. But my greatest birthday was when I was born again when I was 14 years old. That made me who I am. It makes you who you are. And he changes you from the inside out. Let us pray. Father, we're so grateful. I thank you for this day. I thank you for this country. I thank you for Fort Rooker, Alabama. And I thank you, Father, for the thousands of servicemen and women who have been trained there. I thank you for the jobs that supplies for our community. I thank you for the sounds of freedom as we hear the helicopters flying. Father, thank you for giving us wisdom to advance beyond horses and chariots and, and implements of iron. And Father, thank you that as nations rise up against nations, your word says those days are going to be here. But Father, I thank you that it's a holy war. I pray for the nation of Israel that your peace would be upon them. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to be strong on their behalf. And Father, help us as the United States and our president, Lord, to continue to have the backbone to say what's right and stand up in spite of popular opinion. I pray, Father, that you would lead and guide us. I pray, Lord, this morning that there's men and women, boys and girls here today that's heard the gospel. They've heard it a little different today, Lord, maybe in their heart. And I pray that this may be the day and the hour that they say yes to your salvation. And, Father, it's not about joining Open Door Baptist Church. It's not about being a part of this church family, but it's a part of the family of God. And, Father, I thank you that you said that the mouth confession is made into salvation, that with our heart we believe that results in a right relationship. And Father, I pray that you would heal the brokenhearted here this morning. There's Christians, Lord, that have been beat up with a lot of different stuff. And Father, I thank you that your word said to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, and you would add all these other things to us. Lord, I thank you as we read this morning, my brother read, that we're to be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication. As Brother William was sharing with me today, his new insight on praying and praying and praying and don't quit praying. Father, you said we ought to pray always, never cease to pray. And expect great things. Thank you, Father, for the things that are in my life. Because I know that you allowed them to happen. And I know that you're making me into the express image of your son, Jesus Christ. Father, create us a new heart. Create within us a mind to seek you. And Father, may your spirit lead and guide us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Lord, I pray for the folks this morning that are in the valley of decision. That they would make the choice to choose life over death. To choose blessings instead of poverty. And Father, you said that you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. And Father, as my little brother challenged me this morning, Pastor John, will you stand up for Jesus? I want to ask you this morning, will you stand up for Jesus? Is he the most important part of your life? He is your life. Do not be ashamed of the gospel, my friends. These things we ask in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us stand, please. Your day, your opportunity, this...
altar's open. If you want to pray, you come. If you don't know Jesus, I'm telling you, it's later than you think. You don't want to miss that opportunity. You can't get saved after you die. I can only imagine what a song what it will be like when I walk. Now, John, I'm looking forward to it. Unashamed of the gospel. I, can only I want them to recognize me when they come in the gates. Come on up here. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Remind you again, we won't be perfect till we get there. But we need to be working on it while we're down here. You need to be more like Jesus every day. In your life, your thoughts, your actions. It's your opportunity. Do you know Him? He knows you. Amen. want to see Jesus. Just tell me to Jesus. Only imagine. Thank you, Lord. I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine. I remind you something. When Satan reminds you of your big problems, you just be reminded of the big God that you serve. There's nothing greater than He. Greater is He who is in you than He who is in the world. Don't forget that. You hang on to it. If Oval Searcy and John Sizemore and Jerry Knott, George Carrington, Miss Mavis, she's still running and hollering. If they could just tell you, as the old guy that come to visit, the old queen that came to see Solomon says, I half ain't been told. As I know the book says, but you just got to see this. Don't miss heaven for nothing. 
You know, it's, a, it's, not an, you know, it's not something, I mean, it's the eternal destination. It's a motivation for living as we go through this life. But I think about that. I think about those who have gone before us. And um, keeps me alive and well as you look at that, the hope we have in Jesus. I love you. I appreciate you being here this morning. I pray God's blessings be upon you. I pray that you have a great weekend. And uh, maybe if you're off tomorrow, you can kind of celebrate and do some things. Be safe and don't let uh, stupid override. Kind of keep things in perspective. Bible study at five. Yep, yep, yep. And Joe, Miss Sandy, she misses you, I'm sure, but she's got a lot less to do up there now. Uh, something to think about in it. When you leave this place, and the word, I know there's not any crying, any heartache, any hurt there, it says. So things are going to be okay. But you've got to be ready. Keep your focus. Keep in the center of his will. Father, we thank you. I thank you for your love. I thank you, Lord, that you're present with us. I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that leads and guides us. Father, I thank you that you make your word so alive and real. And Father, help us to have good enough sense to make application of that. Father, you said that you give it to us to choose life and death that's in the power of the tongue. And Father, I just pray that each one of us would choose this week, this day, this moment to walk in life. That we would demonstrate your Holy Spirit and your love to the people on every side of us. And Father, as we celebrate this Memorial Day weekend, thank you again for men and women, boys and girls sometimes, Lord, that seem like young folks who have gone and answered the call. And Father, I pray that each one of us might be willing, might be willing to lay our life down for our fellow man. Father, thank you for this mama that you spared in this house fire. And Father, I pray that you help the Sims family. I pray that you'll bless the Tidwell family. I pray that your Holy Spirit would just comfort them. And Father, as we leave this place today, we pray that you'll give us someone that we might be able to share the love of Jesus with. And Father, we thank you for the good God that we have. And thank you for leading and guiding us. And Father, if you don't fight the battle for us, we're whipped already. So Father, help us to acknowledge you in all of our past that you promised to make our past.